gave me sort of a neat way to to go over these games and, and use a um, a nice little board for it. I, I, I have a different, um, you know, game explorer type of thing. Uh, it's this, this program here is called Hierarchs. However, it's not quite as, in my opinion, um, I don't know, just as user friendly. And there's little things like I can't really draw arrows and whatnot. And so that's why I have uh, gone through and just sort of transferred it over into a, uh, a study here. But first thing, like I said, I want to do is just one of these options. Which of these would you guys prefer? So maybe in the, uh, the chat you can put A or D or B, all that good stuff. Okay, one for E, one for C. Okie dokie, artichokey. Let's see here. Why don't we start out with uh, one of these games right here, and then we can look over some, some opening ideas. This one I'm pretty excited about. I, I did put a, a ton of time recently in the last week trying to configure this this like massive opening database. I still don't have it all the way done, but it would be nice to just sort of go through what I have so far, and that's essentially what I showed you guys a second ago. Um, the, the, there's there's so much I could say about it, but but the short of it is that um, essentially I have what is that 115 thousand here it looks like about a million. I actually have a database with three million, um, but I just found out ten minutes ago that I can't open it, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. Um, and then there's a whole another thing I'm trying to configure, but like I said, I'm gonna keep it short. Okay, so let's go ahead and start out with that that first one. Um, and then also, when you guys get a chance, go ahead and sign up for the Lee Chess Tournament. And then we may have a bit of a uh, essentially private lesson today, which is good with me. I still get paid for it. Um, you know, of course, I would like to see more people turn up, but I'm glad that you guys are here. Okay, so I'm going to log into my, uh, my Lee Chess here, and then uh, one of you guys can send me a challenge. My username on here is Ryan Time. Ah, here we go. Yeah, hold on. I can also give you guys a link for it, make it easier. Since there's only there's only a couple of people, we could also make this basically the time control that we're going to be doing. This one right on over here. I think I did get a, a challenge up there. We'll just, we'll just go with this one here. Yeah, you guys lucked out. You basically have like a private lesson, so. So we have here, let's go D5. And we're looking at a, uh, looks like a London. And then I always forget, uh, for those that arrive later, do they see comments and stuff like that in, in the, uh, the chat? I think it was no, so I'll just, I'll just put that down there again. Oh, you do? Okay, okay, good to know. One thing that's kind of interesting about this line here is it seems like you would want to go for this right away, but it's actually theoretically better to go here first. If he goes A3, he, he has enough time to prevent this, which is why I was surprised to learn that this is, this is the, uh, the main move here. But I do think this is a mistake. I could be wrong, but I think you are supposed to play here um, and then bring the rook over because then I don't have this pin. But now I'm able to go here and then get rid of the weakness of the doubled pawns.
and uh, Sai, I believe that's your first name here, if I'm reading that correctly, um, go ahead and um, uh, throw in your own vote to, uh, for one of these activities here. Uh, so far we had a vote for C as well as E, and so we're just going to be doing um, an opening thing in a second, but um, wanted to have your, your input on this. I can also play like another three minute game. So I like to give people options, especially early on in the lesson. I'm going to go E6 because, um, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Okay. Now he has the chance to go here because this is connected. So there is a, a I, I don't actually have this pin. So fingers crossed he does not play this move. <laughs> And he doesn't. Yes. Success. Okay, I'm going to go for here. And so this is also supported by my bishop. So even if he takes this, I'm fine with that because I can just grab right back. And then my plan is to work on these two weaknesses here. One vote for, for C. Oh, I hear somebody. Okay, so we'll play one more. Um, and so if you would like to, you can send me a challenge for a 3 L. Um, uh, do you mean queen side or, or king side? Um, I don't want to castle king side just yet because I, I want to, I want to fit this move in this move B4. There's kind of a, cri a critical, uh, nuance to that that's, um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go I'll, I'll get to you after um, the game is over um, but I am intending to do this I just wanted to get b4 in first okay so he's threatening this where he's going to be attacking this guy um, can I sort of handle that or should I make a move to prevent it I think I'm going to go here well no if I go here I have this attack so let's see here. I could go king d7 but then that's check I could go rook up to prevent, you know, uh, the, the capture of that guy here. I'm going to go this way and just bring the rook up, then castle, and then resume my plan to attack these weak points. Um, it, that's, that's interesting. Could you say, could you say it one more time? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. When there's, there's no Queens in the board, it's, uh, one more big reason to delay castling. I wonder if I want to go here first or here. Okay. There's probably be more important decisions later. So I'll just go here. And then we'll take with the, let's take with the H-pawn. Intention is again to come right here. I don't have this C3 weak point anymore, so I only have this one, but it's, it's going to be parried by A3 in a second. So then I'll switch to attacking this one, I believe. So then you're gonna go right there, okie dokie. Um, then I'm gonna switch again, I guess, a different strategy and pretty much just go for a win on time at this point. Only eight seconds, so a win in that sense is almost guaranteed. I don't wanna jinx it, but yeah. There we go, that's gonna do it for this one. Okay, let me show you guys what I was talking about a moment ago. So I, um, I know this line of the London pretty well, um, relatively anyway. Um, so when you go queen right here and then c4, let's look at the openings database here. Um, since again, you guys expressed interest in, in uh, looking over opening ideas, and I'll be doing that more in a bit. But essentially right here, um, the, the queen can capture. I think that's, that's you know, one of, one of the moves here. But actually more theoretical is uh, bringing the queen right back. And then there's this kind of odd dance between the pieces where you actually go bishop to f5, 
the bishop is taboo because if taken, then the queen could take on, on b2 right here. So you back up the queen this way, and then this is considered balanced. I'm going to go e6. I heard Chesbra talking about this position, actually, and I recall that he said you want to go rook here and then rook to f2 to, to c8. And he was sort of remarking that this is sort of an odd move, but it, it checks out. It's actually a good idea. So that was my plan if he had gone back that way. Um, after taking right here, there's two possible ways to play this. You can either go for uh, b5 straight away or bishop to f5. This says b5 is more common. Um, I, I, I disagree with, with so implying that it's better, and I would disagree with that. I think this is better, according to my, my research and, and study of this. So after right here, then the, uh, the point is you can go a3 right now, uh, and then you're going to prevent this. See, because then you can move the rook over, like right here, and then now if I push takes takes here, there's no pin that supports this concept, which means that now they can they can grab back this way. So there's a critical one tempo difference there, which is why I was relieved uh, to see in this position that he went with um, with bishop to e2. Now I have time to do both ideas. After here, here, and I kind of delayed it for a moment, and then here I realized he has another opportunity to do so. And again, that's because there's no pin going on. And so if I, um, if I, if he had played this move, then if I go here, takes, takes, you can grab. And then if I grab this way, he goes here. So that is kind of a small nuance, but I figured you guys would be interested in that. And that's the, uh, the scoop on this, on this opening. So then uh, the game proceeded and, you know, I think it was like kind of balanced. Probably, probably black has an, a bit of an advantage. This is possible to, to hold this for sure, but at this point, the opponent had only like, uh, you know, eight seconds, and so that's how I, uh, yeah, eight seconds exactly, it says right there. Okay, so, um, next up then, uh, I can play one more viewer, so go ahead and, and send me a challenge, uh, username is Ryan Time. my cat is getting antsy, so I gotta, I gotta let him out, and I'll be right back, and then we'll, we'll uh, pick it up from there. And I got a challenge came in, sweet, sweet. And I mean, you know, if this guy, if this activity interests you, I mean, we could even, we could even do this the entire time. I, I really do like to give people options, you know, and, um, you know, I, I really will adjust the, the lesson quite a bit based on what you guys are, are interested in, you know. After right here, I'm going to go E6, we got a French. So if I get another vote for C, um, maybe two votes, I can continue this, or we can, um, if there's, if there's no vote or anything, I'll just go with the, the next activity up. And I have queued this up, uh, into a leech study, so I am pretty prepared. And if you guys don't have a preference, I would have a strong preference towards this. All right, we got it, we got an advance. Knight to c6. Also, there is a tournament, so go ahead and sign up for that guy as well. I put the start time of this at uh, at 5:30, but we can we can just you know extend it to plenty of options for you guys. All right, pawn to f4. Yep, sure. So supporting e5 since I'm trying to undermine the support of that pawn. Um, let's go with this move, and then I'm going to go here and here. But yeah, you know, as as with all my lessons, I'm always looking to optimize the the value and like learning experience for you guys. And so, you know, all, all this is perfectly adjustable. Um, I, I I had been doing pretty much lesson the whole time for the whole 60 minutes, but I figured that you guys would like the chance to to play. Um, if you'd prefer to extend lesson, we can do that. You know, totally totally open to whatever you guys are looking to do. So please uh, comment in the chat. Uh, you don't have to either. I can just uh, I can just make a decision for you guys, and we'll we'll go that way as well. Next up, though, we will be um, 
looking just sort of briefly at this openings database I've got. Um, this is a million games. I actually had, I have another one that's three million, but my computer wouldn't open it. And I just learned that 10 minutes before we started. So that was kind of frustrating. Bishop right here, the queen is no longer defending d4. So if I go here, that's now a real threat on it, but the bishop does potentially guard against uh, this square here. I think I will take and then go queen out. Could go knight out. Let's play knight first, just to see what he's gonna do. Bishop to e3 is not possible because there's no f pawn guarding it. But certainly do get signed up for this tournament, guys. Okay, he's gone back, so this guy is, is being defended now. And then we'll increase the pressure. We have three attackers on this guy. I think that may be bad news bears for uh, my opponent because I don't know if they can bring another defender on it. Okay, just to ignore it, he's dropping the pawn. Probably, probably a decent move at this point. Bishop is covering some critical entry points for this knight, so that's helpful as well. And we'll go queen takes, well, knight takes may be better, hitting this bishop. This is simpler. I do have a time advantage too, so I don't mind navigating towards the end game. Probably knight takes is better, but for practical reasons, I'm going to go with queen takes. Um, what is an opening you guys are interested in, in talking about? Karakon. Let me see what I got here. Two votes for Karakon. Cool, cool. That's going to be game over. Checkmate. Got him. Got him. Okay, so I'm going to pull this guy on over here. And um, like I said, I really, I really do prefer the Lee Chess analysis board. I don't, I don't think it's quite as easy to teach with this one. But there's certain advantages to it, you know, one being that I can have like a whole massive database like this. Okay, let's check it out. So we'll go, um, I should make a new file. So yes, and then we'll go ahead and click on through. So we go E4, pawn C6. GG, good game, good game. Pawn C6, and then we're going to go D4, D5. Um, and then I guess I'm just going to select the top moves here and then stop me when you'd like to change gears. Maybe talk about something different. Um, if not, I'm just going to kind of proceed forward and then sort of pick out a game that's played between a couple top level players. I most certainly can. So like I said, I'd like to give you guys a lot, lot of options. I'll, I'll, you know, break up what I'm doing based upon what you guys are interested in. Uh, what was it? This one over here. Analysis board. Okay, so we played the uh, the French advance variation, and so I'm not going to use the engine. Uh, the bulk of the game was kind of in the opening, so you can kind of use this to get a good gauge of what are the top moves here. Uh, C3, top move there, knight C6, and then he goes F4. So this is a big divergence from what you're supposed to do theoretically in this position. There's a massive, massive difference uh, in the ratio here of one to a thousand. Oh my goodness. How could it possibly be that bad? Okay, now I'm going to turn on the engine. Um, looks like it's um, an inferior move by a factor of, of uh, 0.8 pawns. 
Hmm. Well, I guess one of the reasons I can think of that might, that might be the case is that you can't bring the bishop here when I have a knight like this. And as we saw in the game, it did become really difficult to defend here. Um, this is this is a, a move that you can play in the classical. Um, for example, if we go back like this, f4 is a main move in one of those. So maybe that's why you got it confused. Uh, right here, bishop to b4 is um, equally as popular as knight to f6. I play knight f6. And this is called the uh, the classical. This is referring to it as the burn variation. I don't I don't agree with that. So then here and then this way, knight comes back, and then we have takes takes, and then now f4 is the main move. So I'm guessing that maybe this is where you heard it, um, and and uh, it's it's perfectly fine in this one. However, in our position, uh, not so good. Oh man, this is oh this. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is like a tiny fraction of the depth that I go into with this. Um, so after here, here, then you go knight to f5. Uh, and so now I'm attacking this guy. I think it was definitely worth considering taking this. Um, you go this way. Yeah, if you take here, then I have one less attacker on this square. And then plus these are potential. Yeah, yeah. There's a potential. Yeah, I think that was a bad call. But uh, it's good you're considering it. Queen b6, and then here, now you just can't really defend it. Well, now okay, now you have to go here. I didn't realize that. You could go, you could have gone here, and that would have given you a chance to defend it. You have two def defenders. I have two attackers. Okie dokie. Um, let's uh, briefly look at this here, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Um, hate to kind of, you know... Be a be a pest about this, but I do want to kind of remind you again. We only have two. We only have two for this arena. If we don't get many signups, that's fine. We can we can uh, fill the whole hour actually with the uh, the workbook. But if you guys like to have a chance to practice, you can do that. You can also do it at the end of class too. That's another way you could do it. How to join the arena? All right, good question. So if you go to this uh, document I sent you guys here, post it in the uh, the chat one more time. Then you go to this link. Then you click on this one, Ryan Time Arena. Then you can join it. Ryan Time Chess Club. You click on this. Bada bing, bada boom. Okie dokie. So we'll go back to this one here. And so more what I guess I'm trying to cover at this point, since we're a little bit cramped for time, is just high level what an openings database looks like. Anybody know? Um, what is considered the, um, the, the, the choice of like grandmasters. It's not high arcs and it's not this database here of uh, Twic. This one's really rare and obscure. I just learned about this recently. What is the main choice of grandmasters when they want to, you know, like Magnus Carlsen, if he's getting ready for a tournament matchup against Anand, you know, what, what tool is he going to use? Anybody know? While you guys think of that, um, and continue with this Karakon. So, j just just like I was I was showing earlier with the the Lee Chess analysis board, it's it's kind of given us a general impression of what the top moves are, but the uh, the the games here are are sort of limited. This is a much smaller database. Um, oh, interesting. No, it does have about the same, or po possibly even more, than this one. But the more games, the better. And also, if you have full games, that's that's highly desirable, which this, I don't believe, has quite as many. Okay, so you go like this, and then bishop to h7 is top move here, bishop d3. And again, these are all just like mainline moves. So we have e6, f4, queen here, bishop this way. And so then if, if uh, you're struggling with this, let's say from the, the black side, and you're going, I don't quite get it, I end up in this position a lot, or maybe more. Um, pertinent to something like this. So you're going, okay, I, I keep getting in this position. I don't quite know what to do. Uh, here takes the only move, here, here. And then you can go show games. And then you could go, if you uh, select, you know, uh, top rating players, you list these chronologically by rating level. Then you could pick out some people. So we have some different options here. So we have Kramnik, Topolov. Uh, I know Kramnik. Kramnik's style pretty well. So let's click on this one. Do I want to save it? Yes. Okay, never mind. So then, um, let's see how he plays out this one. 
Okay, yes, I guess. No. Okay. Uh, he loses this one, though. Hold on. Let's, let's, let's look at one more black one. Anand plays this. 2,800. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so how does he win this? And so when you go through it, you can kind of come up with some different ideas that are more, more uh, holistic. So you're not just looking at, you know, what, what does the engine say and, and what are the, the moves I should memorize, but rather you're, you're going a little bit deeper is, is the idea of it at least and gathering like what are some general plans and like how do you, what's like a feasible example of like how you might win this, you know, and this is not a game against an intermediate player or something. This is like another top, top level player, 2,700 plus. So how does he beat this guy? Okay, so rook d5, and then you can kind of think to yourself, you know, whoa, never seen this. Okay, so Anon plays this thing where he actually goes for this h-pawn. You might think like, wow, okay, I never thought I could go for that, you know? I mean, if you go back to this point, it seemed like it was impossible to, to you know, wind up with uh, more attackers on this square. But just in the time span of uh, seven moves, he's actually able to win that full pawn. Okay, so that's an interesting way to, to possibly win this game. You have here, here, knight c3, and then how does he convert the advantage? Well, let's take a look. Okay, so he's going to push that that pawn, and then he's able to, to get a full pass pawn backed up by the rook. And then again, kind of leveraging that idea of this, this rook along the fifth rank, which I can tell you from experience is, is really difficult to, to pull off. So you have to constantly worry about how it could be attacked by minor pieces and pawns and stuff like that. And then here the question still remains, how exactly is he going to pull this off? Because he only has one big asset, but, whoa, okay, he resigns. What? Why did he resign here? E5? Maybe E5 is coming? What do you guys think? Why did, why did he resign this here? Yay, we have six people. Yay. I think it's because of E5. I think, I think probably black holds this H2 pawn and then attacks right here. So then the idea is, okay, cool, you check out this, this thing with the database, and then you kind of have a, a general impression, like, okay, if I get in this position again, one idea, one plan I might have is to plan a knight on d5, attack this weak point, and uh, maybe attack this point, and use this, like, rook lift idea. And so just, just by reviewing a lot of games, it's sort of the pace that we went at, then you can get a general impression of some, some new ideas and fresh things to try. Okie dokie. Um, uh, let's see here. We just have one minute until the arena kicks off. Now, we don't actually have to start um, at that time necessarily because um, you could just you could just pause the arena. Like, we'll get paired for the first round. You don't really have to make a move. You can just adjourn it. Um, we can do that if you guys would like. I mean, I'll just I'll, I'll briefly cover one of these guys. So, problem number eight. And then it's the one with the check like structure should be one right after this uh here this one um if you had to choose between bishop g4 knight bd7 Ten, nine eight um seven six five four knight bd7 or what are the cho other choices here h6 um Knight a6, knight e8, g6, or, or pawn h6 as mentioned earlier. Which one of those would you choose? Oh my goodness. So many choices there. Um, and I will send you guys the, the link for this. If you're interested in, in going over these different options, um, you, can, you can maybe bookmark this page and have a look-see-loo at that later. Okay, I think we're going to kick off this uh, this arena tournament here. Best of luck, you guys. As I play, I'm going to kind of offer some commentary and whatnot of uh, you know what I'm thinking about and whatnot. Um, 
this is more for people who are um, uh, just just don't want to play in the tournament or just like in between their their match and, and whatnot presumably that should be kind of distracting if you're trying to play your game so you're welcome to just mute your volume but also i'm making a youtube recording of this so i guess it's primarily for the people watching this afterwards in the youtube video but again if you find that distracting just totally recommend that you uh mute your volume um won't be necessary to um to hear my, my comments for the remainder of the half hour yeah exactly if you're playing you should you should mute but yeah, did you guys enjoy the the lesson? We covered some t different random stuff. We never got to the the someone's workbook, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Did you guys you guys uh, find that intellectually stimulating? Learn a thing or two. I'm going to guess yes, because all you guys have muted me, probably. <laughs> so we got a Slav defense. Bishop to g5 right now is considered a little bit early, because there's actually no pin right here. And so the best move is dxc4 when black... I believe it has a tiny advantage early on. No, I think there's a way to make it not an advantage. I'm not sure. Okay, so it goes e4. And so if my pawn is uh, on e6 already, then this pin creates a much bigger issue. Like this is a, a like a big threat because it has a way of maybe winning the knight there. However, since this pin is not there, I can go pawn to b5 and covering the real threat, which is to take on c4. Okay, so it's gonna go knight f3. Now I do have a way of maybe winning this e pawn. I can go b4, attacking the uh, the knight, and then picking up this pawn. If he instead goes e5 right there, then I go take. Whoops, I go take, and then I think I kind of win this race. Um, there might be a way where we both queen a pawn. Okay, I could either just go with my intuition there, or I could actually calculate it. Let, let, let's take a look. Okay, if I go here, there, and then takes, there takes. Ah, you know what I could do at that point is I could grab back, threatening this, and then after right here, takes, bishop takes, queen up, queen right here. Yeah, that's not so clear, actually. So then if I just go, f go for it here, then he grabs this way, then I go here. Yeah, this works. You see, so it's possible for these pawns to just, like, capture all the way down. So I was analyzing the, the race between those guys. Knight to a4, sweet. I have now one upon. Should probably just take this guy now. Then after here takes, knight takes. I'm going to go e6, threatening the knight. At which point the knight may retreat. And then I'll just continue my development and try to win this guy in the end game. But c6 should be a big target for him. Defending the F7. So between this knight and this pawn, he's preventing this move. Mm. Oh, that, that, that drops some material. The knight's hanging. Got him. I got him. You should probably sack the knight right now. Yeah, that was a good call. Okay, so we got like a knight for, I think a pawn. Yeah, knight for a pawn right now. And we'll go queen up. So after takes, I'm just going to go pawn takes. He takes right here.
Then we're going to be playing right over this way. Oh, okay, sweet. This is a good move. So he's going to he's going to uh, take the the bishop this way, and then um, he's going to have some some chances for like some counterplay against my king. But wait a second, can't I go here? And then if queen takes, I can take on g2. Yeah, let's do that. So pow, pow, and then pow. So you should probably castle queen side. I can't take here due to this pin. And then I'll just be looking for different ways to, to simplify. This file may become open. If queen gets to right here, it could attack this way. But I can go knight up here. The queen's guarding c6 still. Attacking right here, so we're probably going to see queen takes. And let's go back. Mm. Attacking c6. Sneaky, sneaky. Ooh, okay, and then if here, here takes, he has a shot at doing this. No, he doesn't. I got I got it defended enough. Queen takes, I'm gonna go here. And we'll go rook over. I love these Lee Chess arrows. I think chess.com uh, asked Lee Chess if they could copy their arrows and they said no. So even chess.com knows it. They're like, yeah, these arrows are better than Lee Chess. Mm, nah, it's no good. Bishop can't take. Probably going to see a rook sack. Um, you know what, I was going to go here to just trade off queens, but I think I can shift to offense here and start attacking his king. Probably, yeah, there's got to be a forced mate now. This is very resignable.
So here, check. King comes back this way. Eh, maybe there's not a forced mate. Let's see, let's see here. If I go rook check first, he's got this. Let's go with here. B3, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go this way. This knight is like the MVP on this king side over here. He's like, yeah, you guys do your thing. Go for it, I got this. Okay, how do we do this? How do we do this? Okay, maybe here and then this. There should have been a force mate there. I think I messed that up. Good game, good game. I don't really know how to play this line, but I think this is the main line.
And he's gonna castle, we'll just go right here. And then pretty much the, the plan is just rock him, sock him with this move. And castle queen side. Oh, and I didn't say this before, but uh, yeah, you know, one, one of these, uh, three of these games, I'm gonna go ahead and review on my YouTube channel. Yeah, I'll, I'll just probably just pick him out myself. C6 makes a lot of sense. This should be coming in soon, and then he's actually going to be threatening this, uh, this pawn. So then I'll do here. Then my knight can move. Who needs the castle, right? We'll do this later. Okay, good counter thrust here in the center. Okay, only one minute on my clock, so I gotta kinda quicken the pace here. Yeah, I'm gonna take, I don't want the knight to get posted up here. Thirty seconds now. Oh, 
Um, I don't know, that, that might have been better, but I'm just worried about this bishop coming in right here. The bishop comes here, he's got this pin. And I'm just really trying to get the open uh, h-file. Good question. I do have a chance to parry this with, with here, so it shouldn't be that big of a concern. Good, it's 5 2 to get the two seconds back. All right, you guys. Well, pleasure as always. Take care. Feel free to continue uh, playing the rest of the tournament, and I will catch you guys later. Bye.